Today we will model, add detail and texture this model. So let's just jump right in. So for the wooden casing of the gramophone, I just added a box and with the cell mask brush and gizmo tool, I started to model it. And here for the lower part, I'm repeating the same process with the cell mask and gizmo tool. As you can see the molding of the lower part of the wooden case here. It's always a good idea to go from big to small shapes, you know, progressively. So in this case of gramophone, casing was a big shape. So I started with that. And once I'm happy with the overall shape, I'm just subdividing it to add some natural bevels to make it look realistic. And since the upper part also has the similar kind of molding, going on i just repeated the same process again uh, the the reason i chose it because you know i will be able to compare other shapes with this and that way my proportions will be in check for the wooden buffer i simply added a box and then scaled it down and just mirrored it in four different directions I use the stamp brush set to lock radius to create those fluted fillets you see on the grid column. Then I simply masked it with the cell mask brush and added and turned on the radial symmetry. And with the inflate brush, I added those moldings you see on the pillar. And then I just repeated the process for the rest of the pillar. I used the lathe tool to create the upper part of the pillar. And then just I mirrored it four times. For the crank handle, I used the good old tube tool and with the tube tool, I just turned on the radius so that I will be able to manipulate, you know, each anchor point. Then I added the cylinder and turned on the hole option to create the turntable and also just duplicated it to create the vinyl record, which will sit on top of it. For the large brass horn, I just used, you know, the lathe tool and just drew the shape of it. And since it's a hollow shape, I had to turn on the hole option. And with the radial symmetry and local turned on, I just masked in regular interval. And then with the move brass, I just simply, you know, manipulated the shape to create what I wanted. And for the floral pattern you see on the brass horn, I simply first made an alpha inside Infinite Painter and just imported it as an alpha to use it with the stamp brush. And I made sure that I was doing it on a separate layer so that I will be able to control its intensity. Now it's time for me to add the medium shapes and for the elbow of the brass horn, I just used, you know, the tube tool and simply cloned it again for the lower part of the, the whole structure. And as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, even though you don't see my references on the screen right now, I'm actually using them. For the concentric pattern on a vinyl record, I made it in Infinite Painter, this one you see on the screen right now. I did it on a separate layer that, that way I could, uh, I was able to, you know, control its intensity. And then I simply masked the middle part of it and just inverted it. And then with the delete layer brush, I got rid of those concentric pattern in the middle. This is, the, this is where I will put the label for the record. And before starting the actual modeling of the bracket of the brass horn, I actually drew the profile of it inside Infinite Painter. Then I simply imported the image as reference in Nomad Sculpt and selected the tube tool. And with the tube tool, I started to trace it. 
Here I turn the profile on to change the shape from round to square and then with the move brush I started to you know match the outline of the reference. And that's basically how I made this uh, bracket. Then for the sound box, I started to draw it, draw the profile of it using the lathe tool. And then I started refining the shape until I was happy with the, how it turned out. Now look carefully. Here I'm just separating the front part of the sound box. And then splitting it. After that, with the mask brush, I'm gonna add those patterns you're gonna see right now. So I drew these three like alphas in Infinite Painter and then just imported it as an alpha for the mask brush. To make the ornament pattern on the wooden case, I just added a box and added some polygons and, and then with the cell mask brush, uh, brush size set to, you know, really low, I started just drawing the pattern until I was happy. And then inverted it and extracted it. Here, as you can see, I'm repeating the same process to create that engraved ornament pattern you see on the bracket. And since it's engraved, so instead of pushing it out, I'm gonna just push it in with the gizmo. And I'll just do the same for the other side. Here you are seeing my screw brush in action. The benefit of this brush is that it just significantly speeds up my process. I've already made a tutorial on it in case you wanna know how to create this brush. So I'm gonna put the link in the description and in the comment section. So this part was particularly interesting. Um, I just created this shape first by drawing it with the mask brush. I just used it as a brush, you know, drawing brush and split it. And then I selected the whole thing and just added some thickness to it by extracting. And that's how I was able to create, you know, this particular shape. This is a very unique shape, but this is not the only way to create this, by the way. Then I took a screenshot and uh, imported it inside Infinite Painter and started drawing th those scales that uh, these pieces actually, you know, it, it actually controls the tempo of the, the vinyl disc. And after I was happy with the alpha, I just imported it inside the uh, Nomad Sculpt and with the stamp brush, I just simply drew it in. It's very simple and quick. And now it's time for me to create the needle and for that I'm going to use the lathe tool and just draw the profile. And subdivide it a couple of times and then with the cell mask brush I'm going to adjust and manipulate the shape of it. Here I used the tube tool to create the thread of the screw. Then turn the profile on and simply twisted it and that's how I was able to create this thread. All right, now we are approaching the end game, texturing, the part you've all been waiting for. First thing here I did is change the matte cap to PBR and then I selected the parts and applied the brass material. And then to break up that evenness of the shiny material, I 
added some roughness on top of it with the paintbrush and the noise texture and then I added some dirt on top of it with the paintbrush and for that I actually looked at a lot of reference to understand where you know usually dirt accumulates Then I changed the material of the sound box, the crank handle and the bracket. As you can see for the bracket I changed the roughness, uh, it was too shiny for my test so I decreased the shininess. And then I followed the same procedure for the other parts of the gramophone. You know, to create the wooden texture of the base of the gramophone, I just added a material and changed the color to, you know, light brown, reddish brown, and set the roughness to, you know, low, since I didn't want it to be too shiny. And on top of it, as I did it with the previous, you know, brass horn, I just started adding some dart and some other, you know, some change in color. Then I decided to change the color and make it darker, uh, which I did not show here, but the procedure was exactly the same as you see right now. And once I was happy with the overall texturing, you know, I decided to make that uh, label for the gramophone record. And for that, I opened Infinite Painter and inside Infinite Painter, I just made it. As you can see, it. it's very simple and you can use Procreate, Photoshop or any other, you know, drawing photo editing software for this it's pretty self-explanatory for the lighting though uh, what I usually do is I make sure that my model is well lit uh, since I want my viewers to see what's going on the forms are you know well defined and stuff and finally then with the paintbrush set to lock radius I just created the level quite quite easily and that's that brings us to the end of the video. Uh, if you watched this far, thank you for watching and supporting my channel. And if you don't want to miss my future videos, please consider subscribing.